What's going on Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams. Welcome back to another video from the Reef Builder Studio for the first installment of Reefology. And this is a series that will become more fleshed out over time. Um, but the idea is to really kind of pack in a lot of knowledge in these videos um, that is reflected in the processes that we do here at the Reef Builder Studio. And there's nothing more fundamental than making saltwater for your marine fish tank or your reef aquarium. I'm gonna tell you everything we do here at the Reef Builder Studio to make our seawater. And the best place to start there is to talk about how we purify our water. So basically over an essentially lifetime of, uh, of keeping aquariums, I have gone through the entire process of being too poor to afford a reverse osmosis unit when I was a kid, getting my first one, and then just really going down that rabbit hole as much as possible in terms of um, having just an excessive number of pre-filtered stage, pre filter stages, uh, an excessive number of post-filter stages, um, DI stages, dual membranes, back flush valves, all the things. And uh, just over that period of time, I started stripping away everything until I realized that like, I don't need soft water. Uh, the only real thing I wanna remove is the heavy metals, the contaminants, um, the impurities in the water. So calcium, magnesium, carbonate, all that stuff that we add to our tanks anyway. My purified water has a lot of that. And uh, you may have seen this on some previous videos. <laughs> But this is the water purification system here. Um, it basically consists of five different just basic uh, purification uh, canisters. Uh, this is our mechanical pre-filter. Uh, this has been changed out once in almost three years. I think this one is going on, I don't know, four, five, six months old. So you can see we, we are fortunate to have very, very low particulates in, the, in our feed water that comes here. Next, we have four very high capacity, some of the high highest quality uh, rated uh, carbon blocks. These are solid carbon blocks. They're each rated for 5,000 gallons. So technically I could make 20,000 gallons per 20,000 gallons total with these blocks, but just in an effort to be safe, um, I really like having the multi-pass method of canisters instead of having a really large one that I have to get special canisters for, special carbon for, or refill myself. So um, these cost uh, $50 for a set of four, and since I make 5,000 gallons with them, that translates to about one penny per gallon. So not bad, right? Uh, not to mention, it's also a lot faster. We get uh, 30 gallons per hour, regardless of water temperature, right? It's not practical to mentally keep track or tabulate how much water we make. So one of the first uh, gadgets that we employ here is a, um, I think it's a hydrologic flow master. Um, basically, this is just an inline flow meter that calculates how much water flows through. You just press the button, it gives you a number. So right now we're at 6,138 liters. It's in liters, I don't know. I changed it to gallons, but it changed back for some reason, maybe got reset. Um, so when it hits 5,000 gallons, we just go ahead and replace all the carbon blocks all at once. And uh, we have 5,000 gallons of water for about 50 bucks. All that water goes into my precious vats. You guys might remember, it's been probably a little less than two years since we set up the water mixing station. So this is two 210 gallon vats. And I, I especially chose these because it, one, they have a small footprint, so they don't take up nearly as much space in the studio and they can go vertical. Also, having a little bit more of a uh, vertically endowed uh, container makes it a lot easier to gauge how much water is in there, right? So if you have a big squat 200 gallon tank, one inch is gonna be a lot more water in that vat than it would be in these vats. So just like our REO units, the water pure purification system is routes through. There is a float valve here on the back and it has the same um, auto shut off valve that you would have on RO unit. So when that float valve gets high and creates some back pressure, the valve uh, basically closes and shuts off all the water going through the water purification. Um, and so yeah, it's, it's a 210 gallon vat, but with any of these vats, you don't fill them all the way. So I think this stops right at about 180 gallons. This vat right here, is purely for the fresh water. This vat right here 
is purely for the salt water. And you'll see we kind of have a nice little fancy uh, plumbing system, which I have seen has inspired some other aquarists on YouTube to create some of their own because I didn't want a bunch of pumps all over the place. So the heart of this particular mixing station is a Vectra, Vectra M2 by Ecotech Marine. Um, and it can pull water from this tank. It can pull water from this tank, um, but it's primarily used to recirculate water through this particular system. Well, you can see here we have two controllers for the uh, Versa, uh, sorry, the Vectra and the Vortec. Um, they're not on right now. I guess I can turn them on. Uh, let's see. So the Vectra basically pulls water from the bottom, puts it up to the top, and then the Vortec um, is basically like a circulation pump to mix all the water inside. Um, so here's one important note about mixing seawater and almost all your chemicals. Um, you want to do it when it's cold, right? Because there's a lot of things that will precipitate, except for buffer, when the water, the temperature is too high. So you really want to try to aim for lower temperatures to mix your salt. It might take a little bit longer, but you're gonna get a lot less precipitation and a lot less um, just caking inside of your, your water vats. So speaking of that, um, one small thing that we do uh, a little bit unique here at the Reef Builder Studio. So there's a filter sock on the other side of this particular tubing right here. It's just an eight inch filter sock and that accomplishes two things. Uh, one, it's gonna fill if like, before we used really clean salt, we used this sock method to trap a lot of like of the silt and precipitate and the insolubles um, so that it didn't grind up in our pump, so it didn't fill uh, the bottom of our vat, so it didn't cake the sides of our container. Um, so it does help to keep it up pretty clean, but on the flip side, it, it, as it captures the salt crystals right here with water flowing through it, I feel like it does accelerate uh, the mixing of the seawater, which happens really quickly here at the studio. Speaking of salt, this is not a sponsored video for Accuracy by Two Little Fishies, but they do sponsor the salt here at the studio. Um, I just, I have so much confidence in not only Julian Sprung's recipe, but he's the one who actually mixes the salt. So Accuracy comes in two bags. We got a, um, this is a f nominally like a 50 gallon bag, um, but it's actually here at the studio, the way we mix it up, it's usually works out to about 45 gallons and you want to use the entire bag all at once. And for smaller amounts or for adjustments, he also uh, offers a box that comes with, uh, I think, 10 packets of five gallons. And again, it's probably worth about four and a half gallons. So, um, like I said, in this vat with the sock mixing method, with the Versa pump, you know, cycling through and pushing a bunch of water through the filter sock, as well as the Vortec pump, um, man, we don't really adhere to the 24 hour rule of, of seawater mixing. Uh, for us, one hour is more than enough. Um, if we really want to use the water, we might actually use it within 30 minutes. Um, and once in a while, if like if it's like in a pinch, if we need to do a smaller water change, you know, just like sucking out a little bit of detritus, um, we might use it within like 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and then for that aggressive mixing, we'll actually add a second uh, Rossmont pump to help, uh, you know, really spin the water along as fast as possible. But the main reason not to use seawater too quickly is because as it's first mixed, you're going to have a pretty high pH as all those elements are mixed into the water. Um, but after about an hour, for most applications, um, it's gonna be pretty fine to use. We, you know, sometimes the, the water sits here for an hour before you use it, sometimes it sits here for a week before you use it. And there's also no issues with having the water sit a little bit longer, you know, if that makes sense. Um, but if we use it like on the fish tank and we plan to do it like a large water change, we'll definitely circulate it for 20, 30 minutes before, primarily to oxygenate it, not so much to remix all the compounds. Um, I know I'm gonna get a question about these. Uh, so in the winter time, you know, if the water does get cold and we want to do some water changes on certain tanks. Um, I don't want it to be freezing. So I found these really cool uh, see-through thermometers. Um, the only thing on the freshwater vat is because this, this vat's not really mixed, the temperature up here will generally be about two degrees lower than it is down here. Um, and I've, I've tested this thermometer multiple different ways, and I find this is such a, a much more elegant solution than having a probe all the way inside, all the way down to the bottom. And it, even worse for this tank, because that salt probe or that temperature probe would have all kinds of caking and precipitation on it. So here we have our see-through uh, thermometer for the freshwater vat. And 
and we've also got another one on the, around the side for the seawater. I remember when I first set up this vat, man, I just, I was really trying to get tricky with it. So I had a quick disconnect valve right here, like you would have for your garden. And uh, it sounded really cool on paper, but two things. One, we never took the hose off. Uh, we never took the hose off for any reason. This is kind of like the cleanest setup that we have uh, so far. And two, it was so constricting um, that it greatly reduced the water flow going throughout the studio. But this is this is cool. I think it's about a 50 foot uh, hose. Um, it doesn't kink. It's made of super high quality rubber. I actually kind of like that it's uh, neon because uh, you know all lots of blue tanks. Um, but yeah, we can just walk this to any tank and uh, fill up a few of the auto top off uh, reservoirs or. Um, you know, general water changes when we're refilling. We just clip this on the side of the tank and turn the pump, turn the, the valves how they're supposed to go. So a lot of times when I'm talking to reefers, I ask them what their salinity is and they give me their specific gravity. Now, they, they're very closely associated, but I feel like in a technical hobby like reef aquarium keeping where aquarists know how to pronounce zooxanthellae, it's not too much to ask for people to give you specific gravity when you ask them for specific gravity or for salinity. So here at the studio, we work exclusively with salinity. There's a lot of common ways to uh, test uh, seawater specific gravity. Um, this is a specific gravity meter. This is my vintage limited range uh, sea test hydrometer. Uh, you're probably familiar with these. Uh, a little bit later on, they came out with a full range sea test uh, hydrometer, which was all the way down to zero. Um, and I remember being young and these uh, swing arm uh, specific gravity meters, they were like, 15 bucks, give or take. And then these were like a, a delicate instrument from the future and they cost like $200. Now we all know these have gotten a lot cheaper. So our primary method of testing water here at the studio for a number of reasons is the HANA digital refractometer. So there are specific solutions for calibrating your, your testing equipment. Um, I find that they can just be a little finicky, um, even like one or two points off, uh, depending on the solution that you have. Um, uh, Hannah makes a salinity checker, but it's it, it needs a special solution for uh, calibrating uh, conductivity, which is then transformed into specific gravity. So this I find is just the, the by far the easiest because this is calibrated with deionized water. We have a one gallon jug of DI water that we use for like our water testing and for calibrating this thing. And it's lasted years and years and years. And um, you just really can't go wrong with a flat line based line of zero parts per thousand. Um, I guess speaking of salinity, you know, if I think for all the reef tanks, we kind of aim for a salinity of 35 parts per thousand. Um, in the past, I would generally run them just a little bit lower in case the salinity crept up. That's one of those things that can happen either due to evaporation and not being replaced, or two, um, very aggressive two or three part dosing is gonna cause your salinity, your chlorinity to increase in concentration over time. And this is like one of those invisible irritants um, for reef tanks, especially the, the folks who are really proud of never doing water changes. So typically we'll do, you know, 10 to 20 to 30 gallon water changes once a month. They were every two months, mostly to siphon out some detritus and about every four to six months, depending on how aggressively, aggressively we're adding a multi-part dosing solution, we'll go ahead and do like a 50% water change to reset the chlorinity of the aquarium. This is how we make seawater here at the Reef Builder Studio. You know, it started out with some pretty good ideas and I think it's been really well refined over um, nearly three years of operation here at the studio. I hope uh, you guys have enjoyed and found some, some good tidbits of information from this first installment of Reefology. As usual, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Pop your questions down below. I'm sure you guys are going to ask me about this. I'm sure you're going to ask me about that. So hit me up and I'll share the link. So thanks again for tuning in this video. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Later, guys.